first of all, hello. Uh, I'm Bartosz and uh, I work with, with Python, with SoftServe, as Sofia mentioned, almost for two years. Uh, I love mountains, uh, I lo love beautiful views and spending time among, among the nature. And I've quite recently become a dad. And yeah, and today we'll, we'll talk about the Wagtail. So for our plan for today, we'll like have an initial view, uh, initial glance at what the Wagtail is, what, what it does. We'll go through key concepts. We'll see key features that all helps greatly gain some basic knowledge about this uh, framework. We'll, we'll look about the future aspiration of the Wagtail, which direction it wants to go. We'll review disadvantages and we'll do small comparison with others. Can everybody still hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> in this presentation, I mainly focus about the key concepts, understanding what, what it is, what is, it is capable of doing, and what it is good for or what it is could be bad for. So I think that's, that's more important. And all the examples I, I would advise to go to the documentation, it's really good. So uh, first glance, uh, this is how the homepage of admin panel looks. And important to note is that, and I will be repeating this a couple of times today, the panel, this CMS, the panel is dedicated only for content writers. So, so bloggers, copywriters, only the people that write the text, put the images to the, to the page. It's, it's not like huge, uh, management system that has lots of lots of settings and you can uh, basically click out your website. No, here you just in panel you write and this is um, distinctly divided roles have. And for the other hand, you build your CMS only with Python. And, and this is what the, what the creator's uh, concept is and what they try to follow and have strong recommendation on this. Uh, it's quite easy and fast to implement, easier even if we already know Django. Uh, we build templates or we configured API to enable our front end communication. It's for enterprises. I will see the, the examples who is using them for professional, for students and hobbies as well. It's, it, it could be great tool for to learn Django and Python. Uh, usually it's for documentation system, news pages, business pages, blogs, and, and it's a, a, all or as integration to existing systems we, we, that would like to this functionality. Uh, and its main advantages are smart features. We'll, we'll see them. Mm didn't see any, any place other any place any other CMS using such such features uh, flexibility with, that comes with these features and good your uh, user experience so yeah that's the walk there it's tiny bird and we'll go for key concepts and advantages so Objectives of the Wagtails are divided into two. One is system construction. It's all, almost all we do with Python. And second half is content management. So uh, this is a role for more editors and, and people that write text documentation or writes the copy of the, of the products. So for the first part, uh, <clears throat> we build it with Python because we can leverage creation using Python. After the time with big CMS frameworks and big systems, the, uh, this clicking through all the options, all the settings and co configuration uh, gets overwhelming. And that's why they, they tend to 
encourage people to, to use Python to create the tool. Obviously, more you create, this can shift over the time, but it's important to, to keep in mind we, we should split this tool. And the idea of multiple hats in many standard CMS systems, one person is everybody. It, it is, he's a webmaster, he's writer, he's CSS expert, he's HTML uh, person and CEO, right? And Wagtails tends to have separate working interface for each role. Like I construct the CMS, I'm Python developer, uh, you write, designer has uh, other files to work on and so on so on i have few positives about it uh, from creators we know that uh, they, they do the sur surveys with proposed cms frameworks and all, most of the clients uh, tend to pick the Wagtail because they like user experience and UI features. Uh, yeah, the most liked Python CMS project by developers at the moment on the GitHub. That's most, most stars. I don't know if that's true, uh, if this tells reality of the things, but it has like the most stars right now. And is faster to growing open source Python CMS project right now. Okay, an important aspect is the building blocks of the Wagtail. So uh, main things, they're, they're divided in three main things. One is, is the stream field, it's, uh, I guess you probably all know how the rich text editors work or what you see, what you get, whiskey, whiskey, how to pronounce them. And uh, this is the feature that solves all the problems that we may get from uh, rich content, standard rich content editors. Uh, I don't have personally good experience with them uh, so that's why I, I really like how the stream fields works and you'll see it. Not sure if that's, that's the same for every, everybody, but it's worth to, to, to discover it. Uh, we'll talk the main building block, block of the Wagtail, which is page, how it's structured, how it looks underneath, because it's, co it's a little bit covered with abstraction, so Later on, it's difficult to, to grasp the idea of page. Uh, and when we know this, this underlying uh, business of the page, we'll work with it much, much easier. And a couple of other features uh, we'll just mention, like images, uh, search settings, code snippets, cache, and API. Yes, and the, the string field is designed to replace the standard rich text editors. And uh, it's a way to store and manage content in very dry, clean and flexible way. So usually how they, how is everybody know how the rich text editor work usually? Or yeah, so so I, I don't think I have to explain. I, I will just mention they usually sh uh, <clears throat> they show visible uh, editor where you can select the fonts, you can input the links, you can input the images to the text, and this magically transforms it to HTML. Yeah. And comes with this comes uh, many disadvantages. Like 
if we wish to change the style, styling of the, this HTML, it may be problematic because this HTML is stored in databases. Uh, and if we have to migrate it, we have to process a lot of HTML and processing HTML with scripts it is not big fun and especially when we copy paste to these editors usually they produce broken html and and when we remove or when we edit we many many times have the option to edit it uh, in plain html so we can accidentally remove a couple of important tags and break the page or even break the entire page layout uh, <clears throat> there are all, always some security concerns uh, with it and uh, it appears for my cases it, when, whenever i work with them it's usually gets uh, degraded over the time more i modify this content in this smart editor it appears to break something sometimes. And, and so more I do updates, the, the HTML gets more crazy and more crazy over the time. And from technical perspective, this is a mix up of a model, which is content, which is text with a presentation layer, HTML in one field. So, Presentation is stored with the content in one DB field in, the, in our database. So, but usually that was the way we, we do it. And for the stream field, the key to understand it is to picture it as uh, our content as in JSON format. So, happens separation from the, our actual content and uh, the html yeah and and that's cool and that enables many features like we are not only limited to html and and let's see the example if if we ever ever try to view which text content is is like long hash with little bit of the text uh, what problem solve is, it gives us aesthetic in data and aesthetic uh, in work with how we work with it. Separates presentation from static or dynamic models because uh, we have now choose, we don't have to have, uh, we can have some of the data static, some of the data from dynamic model and we can mix and match them as we wish uh it does not get broken with time because we we don't modify it uh directly easier to manage easier to migrate the json even if we have that need we can easily update the, the template and and we can process the json easily it's a little bit safer it's always <laughs> it's always up to the how how well you do it, but it's a little bit safer because you don't copy um, HTML from you don't don't have the, the option to copy HTML from suspect sources. Uh, better experience of working with it, and as already mentioned, separation of responsibilities. So for sh short example, how does it look? Uh, <clears throat> I can show you, uh, I built my wife blog about some travel uh, experience in Wachtig and the possibilities it gives is really, really huge. And I can maybe switch uh, share screen to the browser, browser for a moment to show you. Uh, that's possible here. Can you see my browser now? Yes. Okay. So that's the, this is the content 
of the page about the trip experience and only using the stream field i i could define uh, things like navigation for the track this is the road we are going from po point from the start to the end and many stops along the way and as as we read we see the timeline and we can click it through and back and go forward and go to the end or just scroll to the next one so this is all the writer of the content my wife doesn't know anything about html but she's able to to, to use this these things this advanced we may say html to to her con content as she needs okay let's go back uh may may i put a question yes and this is right panel this is some advertisement or what on page right panel can you scroll and yes this is some like advertisement or what the right right panel right side no 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 That's... these are the posts from our website all okay of them. it's also put by you right just yes by my wife <laughs> okay thank you <clears throat> okay let's go back to presentation and we just have to predefine it uh, to enable it for the stream field so the stream what are stream field before we go for uh, one more explanation angle uh, it's a stream field enables us to define many building blocks of our content like images like uh, timelines, titles, uh, mm, we have listings, pros and cons, we can put random banners, uh, we can put the maps with some table structure inside them, we can embed videos, uh, include the maps, and whatever we can think of. I will just pre-create that block and enable it in the stream field and can just select one and as we see on the right side it's not exactly what you see what you get uh, but it's so structured that the work with it is, is really really good so this is maybe a disadvantage if i want to edit my content and and i want to see exactly the same thing in the live page as in my editor streamfield is not that tool uh, but usually even if we have this what you see what you get the end result is usually different and we need to go back at the space at the a few more break lines and styling is different because our panel has different styles than our front so uh, there are some pros and cons of it. And grasping this idea is difficult. And I understand that if I, if I try to approach it, it's, it's, it may hard, be hard to see uh, still. So I, I guess you, you have to try it. And, but also I want to mention what are the possibilities. This possibility is endless we can build not only our content but basically entire page we can have uh, various contents on our body various con contents of our sidebar on header uh, there are no limits so we have we can have stream field nested within stream block so we can could divide it into the columns and each column could have different properties. And right, changing the layout without need to change the contents. I just edit predefined templates. 
and we can enable full flexibility for our writers to use, to use all available blocks or we can restrict certain content types or we can limit the number just one picture or minimum three pictures this minimizes the duplicated code and duplicated content because uh, not all of, all of the content has to be written by the uh, writer on this page it can be written in different database table and just linked And yeah, as I said, can cover entire page or, or just small element of the website. And this is what I say that we use this flexibility that Python gives us to create these content blocks for this stream. And the next on our list is the basic element of the Wagtail, which is pages and most CMS frameworks have different approach to pages. I know some of them use folders and pages. Some of them have, uh, have folder structures, how many folders you create. Uh, this uh, reflects the, the um, uh, navigation structure. And we'll see how Wagtail do it, does it. The main characteristics of pages is basically building block. Uh, we define types of the pages. Uh, it, and in the end, it defines website map, hierarchy of our websites. Uh, the page, each page is extension of Django model. Each page page defines a new database table. Uh, each page has history of changes, statuses, workflow, and visibility options. And more smaller features like unique uh, identifiers, uh, elastic search, support, support for page uh, nav navigation generator. So uh, before we go, each page uh, depends how many pages we want to define on our system. We define one page per type of the contents we want to create. Maybe one is for listing, one is for detail page, one is for content, uh, contact uh, page, and one is for uh, maybe some uh, home page and then we can create admin can create multiple listing page in admin panel in uh, the writers can create multiple listing page multiple details page uh, and contact pages if they want how does it look underneath underneath there's when we add Wagtail to our Django project, uh, we already populate with it the core table of the page. And how many new pages we define? We define new table and they have relation one to one. So in the core table, we, we keep all the basic information and all extensions we need, all customization. Uh, we don't have to use any field from the core, core page. We can replace uh, them with all what we want. So flexibility is, is high here compared to standard CMS frameworks where we define basically every field we can define ourselves. <clears throat> and in the code, we just uh, inherit from the page class. And, and as you know, Django magic, Django will pick it up, create models, and Wagtail will also see that there is a page and it will populate it automatically in our panel. Page has hierarchy. This is, these are page instances, no longer definitions. And there is always instance one instance of the root page, multiple site pages, how many sites we want to support. 
and all the um, content pages, listing pages, article pages, and I mark here article page can be on different uh, levels, depth. One it can be linked from the side page or it can be below or even below. Uh, we define these rules, which which pages can have which sub pages. We can all define these rules in our page class. So th that's all about the pages. And there's interesting thing to know is that uh, images are quite smart for the work. They, they have rich interface for uh, miniatures, pictures, supporting Python and templates, interfaces, animated GIF support, optional. Uh, we can extend image model or totally replace it. Uh, we can crop, uh, not exactly crop, but uh, set the focus area. So when we scale down the image, we can select the focus area in which direction we want to scale this picture, as you see on, on this example. And mass upload, but I saw that all of the CMS support mass upload right now. And something that they work about is uh, enable finding the focus area automatically using the machine learning tools. But th this is, I think, aspiration goal for the crea creators for future. And many other features like settings. These are, this should be the settings designed for writers. Uh, for the content, not really for the page, all other settings should be stored in Python code. Uh, supports Elasticsearch. The, this, the panels and editors uh, with React and creators hope to adopt more and more React to the panel. At the moment, I think most of it is still in jQuery. Uh, snippets, so the the content we can keep in other database tables so we don't duplicate it. We can create form builders. So basically our, our writers can create forms. Mm, has a lot of features involving uh, cache invalidation, uh, connecting with uh, connecting with uh, front services that can enable this validation, sitemap generation, multiple sites handling, and API support. We can uh, just configure it and have it enabled. I have to go back because I now remember I missed one slide. Yes, this one. So this one was interesting. Sorry, I somehow <laughs> missed. Uh, who is using it? It's used by uh, Google. Uh, it's used by N NHS in UK. It's a very popular site. They store many, I don't know how many, but really lots of pages about the health, uh, their health system, their, their health advices. Uh, they have very developed health uh, platform and they handle with Wacter 45 million users, unique users per month and still go in, doing good. Uh, used by Salesforce, uh, much as you need, right? The university, uh, Mozilla documentation also uses and Open NASA. Cool. So, <clears throat> and few but few things that uh, Wachtel may be not good at is that if if I don't know how many of you have experience with Django and uh, but in Django 
you define your models with classes and as the, all the definitions we, we learn, the model is just the data and the functions that operate of this data. But, but in these cases, it's, it's no longer true because your model becomes your page. And uh, this page st starts to include the, all the uh, view components, it grows really rapidly because in, it includes front-end aspects, in, in includes the uh, writer's panel aspects, it includes lots of configuration, and uh, you can override lots of different methods you, you would like to do, and your model becomes your view, basically. So that's not, not good in terms of principles, programming principles. Yeah, and it solves too many problems in scope of, of the model class. So if you like your models minimalistic, this may be weird to see. Uh, yeah. And definitely, we would need to know Django for professional use because it gives so much advantages to know. We could set up, easily follow the documentation and set up our blog and write our blog with, without this initial Django knowledge, just follow documentation. But if we want to do it, do much more, we would le have to learn entire Django, which is huge. And your clients, if your clients be switch from the WordPress to Wagtail, they suddenly will need Python programmers to do website work because all new types of content we have to define, we need to use Python. And Python is cool because we leverage, we automate a lot of with, with Python, we, we write beautiful code, but uh, we need somebody and clients may not like that <clears throat> because they they may be more expensive than than uh, than webmasters it's not the what you see what you get creator uh, i actually doesn't mind this but it's worth to to know and it has a relatively small number of of add-ons compared to existing projects. It's, it tries very hard to deliver all what you would need inside the core structures and doesn't try to go into to add-ons direction that much. We are talking about full Wagtail add-ons. We don't talk about Django. Still can adopt all Django add-ons, but Wagtail doesn't have it much of its own. And from what I, what they are planning to go in the future, they are pl planning to drop J jQuery and go for React. They want to add GitHub like, like inline review. And they want to int enable integration with machine learning. This is around the pictures for now from what I saw the, from the creators updates. Uh, they want to uh, find the focus area of the pictures. And for the future, they want to also uh, customer increase customer experience so now the direction is uh, each customer has different expectations and if you read their cookie you can and uh, you can know what they like right and and uh, you can customize your experience so that's the direction they like to go and they want to improve integrations and uh, better more, more efficient headless things API.
and I did brief comparison and please stop me if I say something wrong because I'm not, not really good with clone or Django CMS. So if you know, please, please stop me. But from my initial research, this is what I came with. So I divided into uh, two things, some, some how we work with it and some basic strong points or weak points of it. So in Wagtail, we define building blocks in Python and uh, use these building blocks by the writers to create the websites. Basically, this is how it looks. And we need to build few blocks before. We need to define few pages before we can show the working panel. Uh, for Plone, we can install a Plone on the server and, and get CMS panel available and, and start creating webs, uh, some pages. And from what I read, I, I didn't work, I just read about it, so please correct me. We write, uh, our work is around writing add-ons or uh, not modify, but extend the, the core functions as, as we need. And they have lots of add-ons and work with theme engine. And for Django CMS, we also can install it uh, on our server and have the panel. And how we work with it, we were building the template structure, create plugins, hooks, customizations, and extensions. So Wagtail is a little bit distinct from, from them. It looks, it doesn't try to comp compete very much, but has a little bit different approach. And I believe that with Python, we, we leverage the Python with end users. If we are using it, we will use Python to, to create and leverage our things. Compared to Plone and Django CMS, it looks like it's more about ready solution and you'll just provide the templates, extensions, and customizations. Both of these approaches, in my opinion, can be good, depends from our needs. And strong points or weak points, a stream field, Django, uh, it's quite fast to build, small but small extension base, totally model-oriented, uh, but mo modern, uh, looks more modern than others. And Plones puts strong, strong effort into security. It's, it's a really secure framework. Has lots of industrial and uh, enterprise uh, in integrations, large extension base, advanced workflows. I didn't found schema for, for database migrations. And J Django has it as default right now. Maybe there is plugin. I didn't find it. And, but as I was reading Plone documentation, I couldn't note that there is many broken links, which was, uh, which was, I was sad about it. And Django CMS has very interesting feature that enables, enables front-end editing, also large extension base, and comes with community and com uh, commercial versions which is interesting. It may be pros, pro or cons, depends uh, what, we, what we want. It has much more features en enabled by default and we've um, provided by them when we use commercial version. And to summary, I would say, I, I imagine that it's hard to embrace these ideas and the best is to try it out. If you have opportunity, keep an eye on its development, it's interesting and promising project. Uh, maybe your client will like it. Never, never, uh, if you have <clears throat> such chance, survey founders uh, mentioned that 
it's very preferred by their customers when they see it. And from Miguel Greenberg, he's uh, interesting and popular per person around Flask environment. And he also built Log himself with, but with Flask. So, and uh, this is how he started his expertise with building his own blog with framework of his choice and writing about it and became very successful. So this is interesting direction to go, in my opinion. And that's all. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, I think we have time for it. Thank you. It was very cool. Time. And we have enough time. If anybody has questions, please proceed. Okay, uh, I have one question uh, about pictures. Does uh, this CMS has some image compression or something like that? Uh, image compression, it, it, yes, we can define exact di dimensions of each uh, pictures and it generates the thumbnail with yeah, yeah. new name, so mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm asking about uh, sizes or something like that. When we put a lot of images on one page, how it will uh, load the page. So as I know, Google has some tool to improve your site, like uh, show some weakness, uh, like mm -hmm. image sizes and so on, yes. to make it faster and so on. So yes. Yes, so so it works with Wagtail. It works the first time we load the page, all the thumbnails are generated. Mm -hmm. So w once we change all the pictures of our website, the first user will get long time for the response. But all of the following users will reuse all these thumbnails. Uh, and we can, in the, our templates, we can uh, decrease sizes as we need. Okay, cool. Thank you.